How's it going everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be finishing off part two of the common issues with the Honda S2000. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and address something that I mentioned in the previous video in part one. Let's go over here and we'll kind of discuss this a little bit more in detail. So let's kind of start with this right here. Specifically, the rear wheel bearings of the Honda S2000 is kind of where I messed up in the last video. A couple of you guys have pointed out that heat may not be the only thing that's contributing to what causes these wheel bearings to fail or just saying that heat is not what causes these wheel bearings to fail. In reality, there's a couple things that do cause these things to fail and that is improper torquing of the rear axle nuts, which uh, Honda did put a technical service bulletin out. They did happen to mention that if you don't torque these to 200 foot-pounds of torque, which from the factory they came at 180 foot-pounds of torque, chances of the wheel bearings failing will go up and we definitely don't want that to happen. Another thing that can happen is just trauma to the wheels. Like for example, if you happen to be putting a lot of sideways stress or just stress in general to that particular part of the car, specifically the rear wheel bearings, maybe you hit a corner, Whatever the case may be, putting a lot of stress on that particular part of the car will eventually cause it to fail and heat does kind of play a factor into it. Taking it to the canyons, doing aggressive driving, track days, all that kind of plays a factor into it. It's not a perfect system, but like I mentioned before in the first video, it, there's things that can happen that will eventually make those rear wheel bearings go bad. Now, as you can see behind me, I did happen to put the S2000 up on jack stands. And that's because we're going to be going over a couple of things that may require me to go underneath the car. But let's go ahead and take a look at the first thing we're going to talk about besides the wheel bearing correction. And that's going to be this guy right over here. That is the clutch master cylinder. Now this sucker right here can go wrong. Uh, it just depends on a couple of things. For the most part, these things go bad with age and also with improper maintenance of them. So what I mean by that is that sometimes people don't change the clutch fluid. They forget to go ahead and replace it with a brand new clutch fluid, whatever the case may be. And over time, that clutch fluid is kind of corrosive. And if you have it in there for too long without changing it, chances are that that part will eventually go bad, like it did with me. That happened to me about three or four years ago where the clutch master cylinder just, it stopped working. It was literally out of the blue. I drove to work, parked the car, everything was fine, came back out of work, and the clutch master cylinder was just not working, the clutch went all the way to the floor. Nothing I can do except, you know, try to pump in it and then limp it back home and replace it myself. Okay, so for this particular part of the video, I'm gonna need to get into the car and drop the top because it's probably gonna get better lighting that way. Okay, now that we're in the car, let's go ahead and talk about this here. Now the transmission of the S2000, while it is a very good transmission to shift and it's also very rewarding, it is also extremely fragile. It can't really handle a whole lot of power because it wasn't designed to ha handle a whole lot of power. You have to be particularly careful with it. Not super gentle, but at the same time, don't be manhandling the transmission because chances are you'll break it. And what I mean by that is there are some instances where people are driving this car really fast and really aggressively. And from first, they like to slam it into second. I get it. You want to get the fastest shift time. You want to be the fastest or whatever, that is 100% not necessary and you are going to damage the transmission. Specifically, shifting from first to second, if you do that, you can potentially break the synchros on the S2000's second gear. You don't need to do that. All you got to do, if you really want to drive fast, is first, second. And look at that. I didn't have to put a lot of force to it. It was really smooth, really slick, and super quick. You don't have to do anything crazy in order for you to get that shift. I mean, I, if I want to go from second to third, it's very simple quick little motion. The shift throws on the stock transmission are not very long. You don't have to be overcompensating by slamming it into second, third, whatever gear. You don't need to slam it. Just be really careful because you can definitely break this transmission. Okay, now moving on with the topic of transmissions on the Honda S2000, we're going to be talking about the flywheel next. Specifically in the AP2s, the 04s to 09 S2000s, those S2000s in particular got a heavy flywheel from Honda. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you here today because that means I would have to take out the transmission and I, I, obviously I can't do that today. 
The problem with this is that Honda decided to put a 24 pound flywheel to the AP2s versus the 14 pound flywheel they can find in the AP1s. Why you may ask? Well, it kind of helps with the revs a little bit. It has something to do with the revs on this particular car since this is limited to about like 8,200 RPMs versus the AP1 is limited to about 9,000 RPMs. Anyway, there's a whole lot of jar jargon. I'll just link the information down in the description box down below. But what Honda didn't actually pay attention was that they decided to go ahead and upgrade the size of the flywheel, making it a 24 pounder without upgrading the pressure plate. So you still have the same pressure plate that is used to handling 14 pounds, adding an additional 10 pounds on top of that makes it really hard for that pressure plate to kind of compensate. So every now and then, if you're driving the car kind of aggressively, you will feel as if though the car is kind of slipping, maybe the clutch is slipping a little bit. The best thing for you to do to kind of remedy that is to go ahead and swap out that heavy flywheel for let's say an AP1 flywheel, which will definitely fit these cars or something even lighter. You can go as light as you want, but it all depends on what you decide to get. It's something that you should do or consider if you have an AP2, just because it kind of wakens up the car. It makes it feel a lot better. I haven't done it on my car yet, but I've driven an AP2 that has a light and flywheel and it's night and day, completely night and day. Now for this next part of going along with the transmission theme, I gotta get down underneath the car so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so now we're underneath the car and we are basically where the transmission meets the engine. And we're gonna be looking at this guy right here. That is the clutch slave cylinder there. Now the slave cylinder on the AP2s in particular have something called a clutch delay valve. And that sucker is extremely annoying. As you guys remember in one of my last videos on getting this car track ready, I removed the clutch slave cylinder from the S2000 because it was such a major annoyance when I was driving. And from what I remember when I was on the track, having that transmission bog or having the car lag because of that and the heavy flywheel was really something I didn't want to experience my next track day. So I decided to go ahead and remove it. As you can see, you gotta do is just remove a couple of bolts, take this out, and well, I did a whole video on it, so I can link that in the description down below for you guys. That little part right there, you can go ahead and remove it and exchange it for an AP1 slave cylinder, and it'll give you a lot better response than this one or you can go ahead and do what I did and remove the clutch delay valve and have the better response. It won't really remedy the lag or the hesitation issues if you still have the heavy flywheel, but if you do have that lightened flywheel and you have the clutch delay valve removed on this, it'll be a lot better. Now this delay valve was just Honda's way of adding a band-aid to a problem they were having with owners launching the S2000s when they were new and breaking the transmission and the differential. So this kind of limits the power it just cuts the power a little bit so you don't really have full torque so you can't really mess up the transmission or mess up the differential but it is something that it doesn't really do a really good job it just kind of makes the driving experience a little bit more annoying thankfully it's something that you can easily take care of by removing the delay valve in itself or swapping out the slave cylinder for an ap1 slave cylinder okay now moving on to the next topic of discussion and that's going to be the soft top on the s2000 now the soft tops on most convertibles they're prone to ripping or tearing but the s2000 in particular is kind of notorious for this and i'll go ahead and show you guys right over here and as you can see my soft top has already started tearing i already have one going on right about there and i have one in the most notorious spot for the ap2s right here so this is where the driver's side is at this is kind of like where you can see the soft top tear starting to happen and i do happen to have one on that side and one where the latch kind of meets the striker here on the other side as well. Now, this is really common for the S2000. You will be seeing this a lot. This is really uh, just something that just happens with these cars. And a lot of it just, just has to do with the way the soft top's made and also the, the soft top frame on the S2000. Some people have gone ahead and just kind of like smoothed out the frames and wrapped them up and uh, made sure that it doesn't cut into the soft top. But for the most part, you know, it is eventually gonna happen. There's some reinforcements that you can do to make that better. Fortunately, you don't have to buy an OEM top if you don't want to. You can go ahead and buy some aftermarket ones. Although I will say that there are some aftermarket companies or soft top companies that don't make as good a quality as OEM. Personally, I'm thinking maybe eventually I'm just gonna go ahead and gut the soft top altogether and replace it with an OEM hard top. I don't know, I'm still kinda up in the air about it. I do love driving with the top down, but if I can't patch these holes up, then chances are that I'm not gonna spend the 1500 plus dollars to go ahead and get this replaced. Because at the end of the day, I can have an OEM hardtop installed in the car and it'll be a lot lighter than having the soft top on there and it'll look pretty cool. 
Okay, now we're going to be talking about the last topic of discussion and that is going to be the S2000's rear differential. Now the diffs on the S2000's, the stock diffs in particular, are all made out of glass. Yes, the AP2 differential has been upgraded with better internals and it's a lot more capable of handling, handling stress as opposed to the AP1's, but the truth of the matter is the differential is a weak part of the S2000. This is a well-known thing in the S2000 community because Honda didn't really think that these cars were gonna be putting a lot more power than what they already do. At 240 horsepower and let's say 162 pound-feet of torque or whatever it is, that's not a whole lot of cause to go ahead and beef up the differential or the transmission on these cars. So Honda just went ahead and added a differential that would suit the car just fine for what it can do. And of course, there are some owners who have decided to test the limits of these differentials and find out that yes, they are kind of weak and you can definitely break them. The AP1 differentials in particular are the weaker ones of the two, as I mentioned before. But for the most part, these differentials are all weak themselves. Fortunately for us as 2000 owners, there are companies that do offer reinforcements for the differentials. Like for example, I think there is uh, Putty Mod, who is a well-known member on the S2000 forums, who does reinforcements of the differentials. He has certain upgrades uh, that you can do to it so it can make it a lot beefier. There are some vendors who do offer some upgrade kits for the S2000 where they go ahead and just give you a completely different diff than the S2000, whether it be a Nissan diff or a Ford rear end. I don't know, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of options for people to choose from. But basically what it comes down is you're not getting the stock Honda diff, you're getting it replaced with a completely different diff that can handle a lot more power than the current stock diff on the S2000. That about does it for part two of the common issues with the Honda S2000. I hope you guys found this video informative and if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you guys are new to this channel, if you like the content of this video and everything else on my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. But that about does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in the next video.